out an operation where we arrested 228 people for prostitution and human trafficking. At the same time that operation was underway, we also had another operation underway where we were specifically searching out sexual predators, deviants, who were focusing on or targeting or wanting to have sex with children. And that was our primary mission. And as I've said before, it takes a lot of people to put these operations on. And if we'd only arrested one person, the entire week would have been worth all the investment. But we arrested many more than that. But that's not possible without our colleagues and our partners. Today I have representing the Lakeland Police Department who worked with us, Ty Thompson, who is a captain. The, we also have Sheriff Crawford from Hardy County, Lieutenant Austin Leal from Auburndale Police Department, Lieutenant Dell Hampton from the Lake Wells Police Department, and then from the State Attorney's Office is Monica Smith. Brian Haas, the State Attorney, is simply the very best. And he thinks, like all of us think, that it is unacceptable for these sexual predators to roam around and attempt to engage in sex with children. He recognizes how dangerous they are. Now, Monica is the tiniest person of our group, but she's the baddest one. When she gets in court, she is going to hold these people accountable according to the law, and they may look at us for our size, but they need to look at Monica for her determination to keep the people and the children safe. And I appreciate Brian appointing you to that position. But today I'm going to go over some snapshots. And in addition to these folks that were arrested and the one that's wanted, I want you to understand that these folks are those folks. Those folks have already been through the system and we're gonna talk about them, but understand that these folks will be the new, those folks, and some of them are already on that list. So let's go over and talk about a few of the ones we arrested. This is Willie Merrill from Plant City. He's already designated as a sexual offender. So see, he's on this list because he's doing it again. But he was also on that list. In 2005, he was convicted of having sex against a 16-year-old child. Back in the day, he was sentenced to one year in prison and nine years of probation, and then he was sent to us. In 2017, we arrested him for soliciting prostitution at one of our ops, much like this, but it was adults he was soliciting. In 2017, at the same time, we charged him for failure to register. So we charged him with new F3s, and believe it or not, for that misdemeanor two, he ended up with 364 days in jail. Well, normal people would say, hey, I don't want any more of this. I've already been to prison. I'm on sex offender status. I've gotten caught again at an op, and they sent me back to the county jail for a year. But you know what? He is a classic example of how they never change their stripes. If they're not locked up, no matter what status we put them on, no matter how many times they have to check in, he's out seeking deviant sex with children. So, in this particular operation, he's online, which is a violation of his condition, and he sees an ad that our undercover people put online, and he goes to an undercover location think he's, thinking he's paying dad $80 to have sex with his child, only 15 years of age. So he was charged with two counts of travel because the first day he traveled but didn't come 
to the operation. The second day he traveled, and that's when we arrested him. He was also charged with using a two-way device. He was also charged with a felony of the first degree, human trafficking, commercial human trafficking, because he was going to pay to have sex with a child. He lawyered up immediately. He wouldn't talk with us. But in his possession, he had four $20 bills and a condom, which matched exactly what he needed in order to commit this crime. So you see, despite his various arrests, his various inca incarcerations, he's still at it. Well, now we've got him charged with a first-degree felony, and our goal is that he goes to prison. He's 45, a good 25 or 30 years, which is about the max you can get, would be a good, unless we can get the judge to run his other charges consecutive. He needs never to breathe air outside of prison if we want our children in the United States safe. But then did I, have I told you before about Larry Hayes? Larry Hayes is 41. He's from Plant City. He's married. Did you hear what I said? The man is married. He just retired from the Army on February tw of 23. He retired from the Army as a staff sergeant assigned to satellite systems analyst. And then he came back into the service at working for the Department of Defense, working at McDill in a high security area. He had security clearance. He came thinking that he was going to have oral and vaginal sex with a 15-year-old child, and he w was going to pay her dad $250 for the privilege. Now, there's a video we're going to look at. Do we have that keyed up now? To see him as he came into the lobby area of this hotel. Is it ready to show, or are we going to show it at the end? He doesn't have it queued up yet. Okay, we'll show it to you at the end of the operation. Keep in mind that he immediately tells us, I'm there to rescue her. Well, the reality is we rescued some child from him. He doesn't have any criminal history until this arrest. So he's charged with soliciting a guardian to travel, which is human trafficking. It's a first-degree felony, okay, along with communications devices and that sort of thing. All right, next is Edmundo de Salva. He's 36. He's from North Carolina. He's married, and he is a TSA screener. That's right. You know the guy that you got to go through the line at the airports? This is him at Raleigh-Durham International Airport. This is who the federal government trusts to screen you. Makes you wonder when they want to do extra screening on children, doesn't it? So he thought he was going to pay $100 to dad to have sex with her daughter. Well, so happens dad and daughter are undercover folks, but what did we do? We saved children from being victims because if he hadn't have hit on our ad, he might have hit on another ad for a real child. And when we asked him what he was doing here, he said he was on his way to South Florida to attend a birthday party. Well, we, are, we don't have birthday parties at the county jail, and he didn't make it, and he's locked up. All of these guys I'm talking about are still in jail. They're not out. And then he sprung this on us like his DOD buddy. They're really not buddies, but they think a lot. Hey, I've had TSA training, and I was here to do my own investigation. Well, too bad, buddy. We're taking you to the county jail, and we're going to give you some screening on the way in. And he traveled. First-degree felony, human trafficking. Then there's Hassan 
Abu Halia. He's from Brandon. He's 27. And he's married. Does it ever occur to you that there has to be some mad wives? If there's not, they should be mad wives, and they should be ex-wives. It's like, hey, you might as well move on with your life because upon conviction, these guys are not coming home. He said that he worked as a, a customer service at a customer service center as a call supervisor. And he said that he worked for AT&T. AT&T didn't want any part about that, and they did not confirm that at all. He's a Jordanian citizen, but he has a permanent resident status in the United States. He thought he was paying $100 for a half hour of sex, and he thought he was paying it to a mom and in turn was going to have sex with her daughter. Well, that's a first-degree felony. He's still locked up. And then there's Lewis Nelson. He's 29 from Tampa. He said that he worked for Bosch and Loam in Tampa. And they would not confirm that. I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to take credit for this rascal being around either, but we confirmed it through pay stubs. And he also said he drove for Uber Eats. Now listen, folks. I know everybody's got to eat. But we see the weirdest dudes driving and delivering packages and Uber Eats. That they're sti They'll steal stuff. They'll try to have sex with your kids. You got to be careful who you invite to your house because then they know where you are, and if they see your children, they see that too. But he solicited a guardian uh, for sex. Oh, did you know that he's a Haitian citizen here on a work visa? We did an ICE notification just so that they would be aware. We also notified the Haiti government, like I'm sure they care, that he's here doing this stuff. But He's also locked up with a first-degree felony charge. And then there's Brandon Ray from Mulberry. He works at the school board as a mechanic. He did not travel, but he agreed to pay Dad $100 for sex. He said he was worried and scared to travel because he was scared of law enforcement in Polk County. He said, you know, that Grady don't play. Well, he's right about that. When we arrested him, he admitted, yeah, that's me. And he, then he tells the detectives, you know, I still respect that Grady Judd for all the work he does to protect children in this community. How many brain cells do you really have? I mean, like, you're the guy I'm trying to protect the kids from with my great detectives and those from the police departments. I appreciate your respect in me. I hope you like the accommodations at the jail. Just thinking out loud. He didn't travel because he was afraid. Then there's Manuel Canasi from Land Lakes. He's married. He's got three children, 17 13 and 19. He's a laborer. He did not travel, but he was charged with unlawful two way communications, using a computer to solicit a guardian for sex. He wanted to have sex with a 15 year old child. You have children the same age. And he's out wanting to victimize other people's children. He was willing to pay $100 to have sex. He sent a screenshot of one adver advertisement that went out that was calling us out. And then this is his quote, that sheriff is a hard ass, end quote, and he don't, doesn't play, quote again. Well, 
right on both counts. And he's also locked up even though he didn't travel. He was afraid. So then there's John Adams. He's not in custody yet. John gets an extra big picture because he's outstanding. Now, folks, y'all know John. He's a contractor. He works in Lake County. He lives in Dunedin. He's the local guy. He chatted. He was going to pay $380 to have sex for two hours with a 15-year-old girl. He was going to pay mom. And he talked very, very filthy. We can't even say those words. How bad are they? They're worse than the words your mama used to wash your mouth out with soap for saying when you were a kid. I tell you that. And he talked about all the vile and nasty things he wanted to do. Fifth, he's a filthy talking rascal. Well, John, this is, he's not any kin to the second president or, you know, as far as we know. John, you might as well turn yourself in because we're coming after you. We're going to find you. Yeah, we know that you're hiding right now. So you can go to jail or you can go to jail tired, and how you do that's up to you. And oh, for friends, relatives, somebody that may know where John is, if you call Crime Stoppers and tell them you can stay totally anonymous, we'll give you cash and he'll go to jail sooner rather than later. He's out and he's capable of having sex with your children. Now, I want to remind you of an independent press conference we did last week of Robert Miranda from Titusville. He was not a registered sex offender here, but he was living part-time here. And this is a guy that was masturbating and tried to get a little girl, a nine-year-old girl, into the car by saying, have you lost your puppy? Come look at this brown and black puppy. And the nine-year-old girl ran to a friend, and we charged him with a lot of things. This guy, as I explained last week, is horrifically dangerous. The courts yesterday just rejected his appeal for bond, so he's going to be in jail until he's tried. Our goal is to send him to jail forever, but guess what? In a different part of the state, he was on that list. And because of his conduct, there was new charges. He went here. He was not part of the operation, but he was one of the arrest of someone who was there. So when you look through the group over here, it's important to understand and I want to underscore this, do not think across the Tampa Bay area that these numbers are any larger than the other metro areas per capita for the population. So you'll have greater numbers if you, than us in Hillsborough or Orange because it's a greater population. But those kind of folks right there that we arrest, keep this in mind. There are 1,256 registered offenders in Polk County alone. 1,188 of the 1,256 are for trying to have sex with a child. Or they did have sex with a child, and they served their time, and they're, they're, they have sexual offender registration. Of the 153 predators in Polk County, 126 of those charges were as a result of conduct against a child or threatened conduct against a child or a minor. Now understand, when you go on this list as an offender, you have to register twice a year. And we're supposed to go out and lay eyes on you by state statute once a year. In Polk County, our detectives go out and lay eyes on you four times a year. 
a lot more than the state requires. Predators also have to register four times a year, and we check on them four times a year in addition to the registration. But that's all we can do. This is the ones we know about. And of this 1188 and 126, or if you look at the totality, 1409, we arrest people every week for violating this status. So that was the other part of our operation, not just to catch the new ones, but to make sure where these folks are. And they violated. Now, these two guys are at large. This is James Johnson. He's 39. He's a sex offender. He's from the Lakeland area. His last known address was 1409 Don Heights off of the e east side of the county. But we don't know where he is. And that's part of his new criminal charges, which is an F3. His previous charges was having sex with a minor and impregnating the minor. He served his time, three years in prison, back in the day, went on sex offender status. We want you to know there's a reward out for this rascal. And then there's Anton Starts. He does not particularly know James, but he gets to have his picture out here. He's a sex offender. He was last known to be on St. Paul Drive in Winter Haven, and that's just down the road here, about a mile. He's at large as well. And we want him for the same thing we want Johnson for, failure to maintain an address. He was in prison for five and a half years for a sex offense, plus an additional five years for registration violations. So he's been to prison already 10 years. Well, when we find him, we're putting him back in prison for some more violations. You see, when these folks aren't locked up, they're a danger to society. Keep your kids close. Know where they are. Know who they're with. Or they could end up with somebody like this. Now we're going to ask our colleagues and our teammates to, a couple of them want to speak with you. We'll start first with the Hardy County Sheriff, Sheriff Crawford. Sheriff Crawford is determined to keep the people in Hardy County safe. When we arrest these people, make no mistake about it, they come from other parts of the state here, and that's when we catch them. But whether it's Polk County or Hardy County, Hillsborough or Orange, wherever they are, if they're not locked up, they're dangerous. Sheriff? Thanks, Sheriff Judd. And what he says is true. It's, it's an ongoing thing, and per capita, where violations are in Hardy County being smaller, of course, we have less violations, but they're out there. And I want to thank him and the agencies uh, that helped out in this investigation and, and got these individuals off of the, uh, off the streets. Uh, what is happening with the children? Uh, by these vile people is it's unconceivable really and it's just it, it's hard for people to understand uh, why it happens but again uh, with the state attorney's office I'm thinking that uh, we're going we're going to do good and keep these people away from our children uh, Human trafficking is, is something that is on uh, a lot of people's mind these days, and, and it's, it's, it's got to come to the forefront like it has here. And I want to, again, thank uh, Sheriff Judd and the uh, agencies that has helped out to keep these people off the streets. Thank you. Next is Captain Ty Thompson, a dear friend of mine and a professional law enforcement officer. His agency helped us immensely during this entire operation. Captain? On behalf of the Lakeland Police Department and Chief Sam Taylor, I'd like to uh, say as a representative of the Lakeland Police Department that we were fortunate to have participated in this operation as well as many operations in the past. 
that uh, Sheriff Judd has included us in. This operation happened to be in the greater Lakeland area, which benefits our agency and our community greatly. Um, I would like to commend all the law enforcement agencies who participated in this operation and their continued efforts to keep our children safe in our community. If our goal saves just one child, then we have, we have successfully committed that mission, but our goals are to protect all the children. So again, thank you to all the agencies that participated and to Sheriff Judd and his agency for their professionalism and their guidance in this human trafficking effort. Thank you, Captain. Do we have the video up? Okay, this is the lobby of a hotel, and what we have is an undercover person that's going to be setting and waiting on one of our deviant predators, thinking he's coming here to pay for a child. You see, he's giving him the money, and when he gives him the money, he's going to escort him down to where he thinks it's a child in that room, but he's surprised that it's not a child. Like he's supposed to work, but instead he's just going to knock on the door, I guess. He doesn't know how to use the key. There you go. He's a slow learner. Okay. All right, and here's the second one. If you, the lower corner is our undercover, he's blurred out. And in just a minute, there's a man coming in here who thinks he's going to pay dad to have sex with his 15 year old daughter. And here's. Some small talk. I'm going to go have sex with your daughter. I mean, what, what do you say to the guy whose daughter you're about to rape, you know? This won't take long. This is insanity. Now, when he waved, he was waving to one of the undercovers that he thought was the, the girl. So once he saw the girl, hey, she's real, then he pulls out his money. So talked to dad, saw the girl, paid the money, and he doesn't realize it, but he's off to be arrested. But if it weren't for us operating undercover, this would be a child that was attacked. Calmly, coolly. Okay, I think you get the idea. Okay, any questions for us? It's just people watching. You know, I'm thinking, do parents really do this? Is this really what they did? They just were just on these websites. If they didn't, then these people wouldn't come to us. But they absolutely do. They sell their children. But do you think about these websites at all? They well, I I don't like to talk about where other people can go look for these but the people who do it know, know those websites well, and they're there. Now, that takes us to the next step. Why in the world doesn't Congress make these IT people responsible for that content? Instead, they step back and say, oh, it's just passing through our servers that we're making billions of dollars on. We're not responsible for it. But you know, if we can create this immense technology that you can ask, you can talk to your phone, ask it any question, and in two seconds get the answer back. 
we can stop this conduct. See, before technology, before social media, it was very, very difficult for a sexual predator to hook up with a child. And now it's very easy because you can hook up with a child, you can hook up with the parents of the child, you can groom the child, you can groom the parents of the child. We see these sexual predators that actually take up with mom who's divorced in order to get access to the children. But these IT companies could restrain this by content checking, but they don't. Because you know what? They really don't care. They're after profit and they don't care. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Have a good day.